Today in Ireland, many of our local communities are in crisis. Unemployment is still very high, emigration is continuing and daily costs of living are rising. A large proportion of our disposable income is spent on food, energy and transport. Practically all of this is sourced outside our local community catchment and draining hard-earned money from local circulation. The average family spends €2,500 per year on home heating and electricity. This all adds up to over €6 billion Euro that's leaving our local economies and Ireland each year. And all this money that we lose on imports of fossil fuels is draining our local economies. If only a fraction of this was kept circulating in our local communities, it would generate new enterprises and badly needed jobs. It would save us money on energy, build resilience and competitiveness, and at the same time, it would reduce our carbon emissions dramatically. There's a real emerging movement to change all that. This will save money and keep it in our local community, create new jobs and build resilience. But this story is not about the numbers, it's about people and community power. And I'm on a journey to find out how it's being done. The Arran Islands are pioneering a groundbreaking new project that could change the way Irish communities operate in the future. Here on Inish Moor, I'm meeting with Michael McGilla, who's chairman of the local cooperative that's spearheading the energy project here. Michal, can you tell me about the issues concerning energy here on the Three Islands? Well, at the moment, all of our energy is imported. It's all coal, oil, and even our electricity uh, comes in by cable, all imported from the mainland at a huge cost. Right, so you have big issues in energy, and you're probably very vulnerable to energy shocks here too, or shortages here? Oh, we are, and uh, trying to keep uh, supply in for the winter, as always, is, uh, and the cost of it for, is, is a worry to everybody. So what do you see as the solutions here? Well, we have just started with a new cooperative, and uh, with our idea is to produce electricity uh, on the island via wind power at the moment, and maybe later wave power. So hopefully, within the next 10 years, we will be self-sufficient or very close to it in, uh, for all our own energy. There are about 1,500 people living on these three islands, and they have about 150,000 visitors coming here every year. Currently, they depend 100% on all of their energy needs from the mainland. But they have this massive wind resource here. This could supply all of their energy needs in power, heat and transport. And they could also be exporting energy to the mainland. So let's see what the islanders are doing about this. The Arran Islands are like a microcosm of Ireland. Arran, like Ireland, is a small island off the coast of a bigger landmass. It, like Ireland, is at the very end of a fuel pipeline, vulnerable to foreign energy shocks and paying a higher premium for fuel imports than the mainland. So what's happening on Arran can show us the way forward for Ireland as a whole. Over the next few days, I'm looking at what's happening and meeting those involved. I talked to Kermit Walsh from Energy Cooperatives Ireland. Kermit has been helping the islanders realise this complicated project and hopes to replicate it elsewhere. Kermit, what's your involvement here in the island? Well, Duncan, about Two and a half years ago, we had a public meeting in Dublin, and some of the people from the Iron Islands came over to that meeting, and they had a very ambitious plan to become carbon neutral by 2022. So we set about deciding, well, what is that? So there's actually, we've decided there's two main resources that the Iron Islands have. One would be wind, and in actual fact, the other one is the people of the Iron Islands. People power. People power. They actually right. believe in this, and they've been talking about it on the islands. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could only create uh, a self-sustainable uh, islands where nobody would have to emigrate? Could we ever achieve that? So what are you actually physically doing here? 
Um, there are a number of projects, there is a number of different technologies being employed on the three islands, not just not just Inishmore. And those technologies range from solar collectors to heat pumps, even down to just ordinary people's homes being retrofitted. And with that comes the buy-in from the local community. People want to know how can this type of enterprise affect them positively. The first step to becoming self-sustaining is to reduce energy consumption. Because the Iron Islands are so prone to severe winter weather, one of the first ongoing activities here is the insulation retrofit of the existing buildings. Well, we see what they're doing now with insulation. They're fitting external insulation on the outside of the walls here. They've put 130 millimetres of polystyrene and they're fixed with these nylon fixings, which are non-corrosive. And they've also fitted double glazed high performance windows. So the whole of this envelope is going to be wrapped with insulation, including the roof. So the heat demand now for this building will be down to about a third of what it was, much, much less energy. And instead of using an oil boiler, they're now converting to a heat pump. And that means they can use wind energy through a heat pump, giving them very, very cheap, but also totally renewable energy and zero carbon for all of their heating. Terry Heary is an Inishmore resident who's been retrofitting and addressing the energy needs of his home. So how are you going to heat this house? Well, I'm planning to get an outside boiler and then eventually, when the place is properly insulated, to get a heat pump. Right. Well, my view is, I'd, yeah. if it's an oil-fired boiler, forget it. Yeah. I wouldn't do that, if I, mm -hmm. my advice. Yeah. I would definitely kind of hold back and put in the heat pump mm -hmm. or, in the meantime, put in a wood-burning stove. Mm -hmm. Wood-burning stove, yeah. Absolutely, because that at least will bring down your heat loss yeah. quite dramatically from an open fire, for example. Yeah. But I'd avoid oil heating because oil prices are going to continue to rise. Well, I'm aware of that, yeah. And, and they're very carbon intensive. And eventually the whole island is going to be running wind energy. So right. if you put in a heat pump, at least yeah. now you could, you have electric yeah. solution too. Another interesting energy saving idea is the recent introduction of electric cars onto the island. Electric car technology is developing fast, but seeing as Inishmore is only 14 miles long, these small short range cars are ideal for settlements in this location. The Iron Islands, in conjunction with SEAI, are testing 14 of these electric cars to see if they're a viable and useful solution for transport on these islands. Michal, how do you find the electric car? And they're lovely. They're ideal now for somebody who need to carry two passengers and uh, very cheap to run. Uh, ideal for an island situation. Yeah, because you're not doing long distances, are you? No, no. And, and we can get about 40 kilometres between charges and plug it in overnight. It's ideal for, for going to work, going down to the shop, short distances. Uh, it's, it's lovely for that. Seems great here, actually. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's ideal. It's ideal and very cheap to run. We've tested those for over three years now, and uh, you can run one for about 100 euros a year. So it makes sense if we can have our own electricity and get as much as we can powered by electricity. We've seen what they're doing here on Inish Moor with saving energy. But how exactly are they going to generate the energy to do all of this? Currently, the islanders are scouring the island for suitable locations to install wind turbines. The plan is to power each island with two large wind turbines. This will also create a surplus of electricity that the islanders can sell, and they are setting up their own power company to do this. The local Corcommon here in Kilronan has formed Inishmore's Energy Cooperative. They formed a special committee to spearhead this enormous project, and the Corcommon have enlisted the help of different energy agencies from all over Ireland. The important thing is to consider that all of the planning, the power purchase agreement, uh, the grid connections are all in order, etc. But generally, projects should look to be self-financed, if possible. This project is very complex, 
There are a lot of factors that have to come together here, such as sourcing suitable locations for the wind turbines that create minimal impact on SACs, and approval from the National Parks and Wildlife Service. And of course, to achieve consensus from all the residents on the three islands. Right, so you think that you could get a buy-in by most people for oh, this yeah. overall concept. Oh, oh, oh. I think that would be fantastic for you could get 99% of the people in this yeah. island part of this process, you know, and even willing to invest small amounts of money in. It could be very small, it doesn't matter. And that they got good return on their investment over time, you know. That's Projects like these need significant investment. So how do small communities like Arne finance this? Normally they're funded with bank finances. So for instance, if you have someone who's willing to buy your electricity, either a power company through a power purchase agreement, that's usually sufficient to get approximately 70% in terms of a loan from a bank. So the community needs to find some way of sourcing about 30% of the capital cost. So that would have to come from investments from the islanders themselves, possibly some uh, community grants from, from agencies out there. Aiming to achieve sustainable energy communities may be new for Ireland, but it isn't new in a wider context. This has been happening across Europe for the last two decades. In Ireland, for example, we spend six and a half billion every year on the imports of fuel, oil, gas and coal, draining our economy. That money just leaves our economy. No benefit to us. Every time you fill up your, your car with petrol, that money is bye-bye, gone out of the local economy, gone abroad. Moodling is a medium-sized Austrian town near Vienna with a population of 25,000 people. They've been active in making their community self-sustaining in energy with very beneficial results. Biomass technology. Oh, right, That's, this is all biomass here. Is that it? is all biomass. They have a district heating system that heats all the town's buildings using locally sourced biomass wood fuel. They've installed photovoltaic panels on the roofs of all municipal buildings and many houses too generating a sizable portion of their own electricity. As well as retrofitting and providing their own fuel, most of the food consumed in the town comes from local farmers. They've cut transport costs for residents by creating effective cycling networks throughout the town. They've also direct affordable rail links into the heart of the town and to Vienna. By taking the cars out of the town centre, they've created open civic spaces which makes life pleasant, thus encouraging people to come into town and spend time, which increases revenues for local businesses and employment. The people of Moodling are so focused on these projects that they're constantly looking at the tiniest ways of saving energy, improving efficiencies and quality of life. This hydropower plant harnesses energy from the downward flow of the town's water supply from nearby hills. So what's really good about my trip over here to Austria at this time is that I'm seeing tangible solutions in operation proving that this is the solution. All the projects that this community are engaging in is about the future and all the focus, all the investment is going into renewables, into sustainability, into energy efficiency, and that's what's going to reap the benefits. So what's important about this is part of an overall initiative, if you like. All of these small measures make the difference. So when you combine them together, you, you, you achieve total sustainability. Over the past five years, Moodling has twinned with Dundalk, a new chattel in Switzerland. From this, they've discovered that the key to these successes is partnership and communication between the community, business, and policymakers in the town. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Gerhard is the local mayor, and he's a driving force behind these initiatives. It is a great situation to talk together, to have the same aims, uh, same objectives, and to, to exchange experiences, you know? So everyone does what is to be done in his own uh, town, or region, uh, but we exchange uh, information about this and this is very interesting to see uh, that other countries, other towns uh, are looking for the same um, goals, you know.
What's different in Austria is that self-sustainability in energy is always on the political agenda, not only at a local but at a national level of the political debate. There's 25,000 people living in this, in this town and there seems to be a very strong push now for all of the community here to embrace sustainability. His electorate are telling him to embrace sustainability. He's no choice. If he doesn't do it, he won't get re-elected. I think that's very interesting. Just imagine our politicians, they could be doing the same if the electorate in Ireland said, we want you to do this. This is important for our children. What's happening in Austria might seem light years away from what we're doing in Ireland. But things are starting to change here too. Pilot communities in Ireland have already begun to make similar changes to Austria. And this has been helped by a new incentive called the Concerto Programme. The Concerto Programme has been funded by the European Union Framework 6 Programme. And that has provided European funding for the three communities that we've been involved in. And they have had 30 different communities around Europe that they have funded to see how sustainable energy communities can work together. So what benefits can it achieve for Irish communities? Actually, what they're doing now is creating a momentum within the community. They're actually building capacity to take on bigger and better jobs, take on more opportunities, and developing a sustainable energy community that will last for much, much longer. And that allows them to develop a sustainable energy economy in the local area and build on that, keep saving, keep finding new ways of doing things and looking at more renewables. And it's keeping them, them, the money local and employing local people. Drumban and Upper Church communities and Temple Derry in North Tipperary have already made significant inroads towards becoming energy self-sustaining communities. Typically, less than 1% of the energy that we consume in our local communities in Ireland is produced locally. That's for heat, power and transport. All this badly needed money is drained away from our local economies and it denies us of jobs. I'm here in Drumban in County Tipperary and I'm going to see how this local community has come together to solve this problem and build resilience. It's great to see the Drumban Upper Church Energy Team coming together and creating this initiative. So is the rising cost of energy a big issue here for the community? Yeah, true. We actually did a survey in the community and we found that there was a million euros spent in energy for heating our homes for 400 houses. So um, we thought that if we could see, save even 20 to 25 percent of that, we would be keeping 250,000 in the community and creating jobs within the community as well. So the idea was to retrofit the houses, keep the energy in so that we're reducing the energy demand. I think it's fantastic. Plus the fact that we have in this year now we're doing retrofit on 28 houses and it's been done by local a local company which is fantastic like you know when a community works together as a cooperative they can all partake and share in various funding incentives to finance these projects and build a cost-effective economy of scale if you're only doing one in this way not only do they all benefit as a community but they also get the work done to a higher quality and at a lower cost than if they were doing so individually. So um, over the last 18 months we've invested 400,000 and that's from home homeowners investing in their own properties and with a grant of 300,000 from SEAI. Um, it's a fabulous initiative that could be rolled out in all communities all over the country. Well this is a real self-help uh, project from a community from the bottom up and our job is to be out there in communities helping them develop projects like this. And uh, of course, as well as saving energy and on their fuel costs, home heating, they're also um, reducing their carbon emissions. And the community then is able to sell those carbon credits to Electric Ireland, which will be an extra source of income for this community group. Marcella, what sort of message would you like to get out to other communities? I just think that it's just a massive project for such a small community. And I mean, if we can do it, 50 houses over 18 months, any, any community can do it. So, Nora, is this your house here? Yes. Uh, this as well as being a technically efficient way to insulate a house, external retrofit can also match any architectural style. Quite thick. We've installed walls and 
Noel has been able to replicate all the traditional features of his Irish cottage. South facing back garden over that wonderful view. So obviously you've brought your energy bills down quite a dramatic, have, they, have you? Well, we've had to use very little heating at all in the house between the end of summer and now. I think we've only had a fire going every second or third night because even at now, at this point, it's starting to warm up and maintain the heat that we have already in there. One of the things we need to increase further that's already happening in Europe is the cultivation of sources for renewable fuel. This will help reduce Ireland's carbon emissions and create local employment in communities. About 90 euros a ton. 90 euros a ton, right, okay. And that's a lot cheaper now than oil, isn't it? Much cheaper, yes. Much cheaper. So it's really cost effective, yeah? It is, it is indeed. And as well as that, it keeps the money in, in this locality rather than uh, sending it out to our friends in the Middle East or God knows where else. Absolutely. And have you got much forestry in the area here as a resource? Uh, this place is uh, full of forestry. Uh, there must be a thousand acres in this uh, medium sized parish alone. Right, so you've got a huge resource now of, of wood energy here. We have indeed. Harvesting forest thinning, energy crops and biogas and producing them within the community. This is best done at a local level and would benefit everybody. And is this the local fuel you've got here, by it the is, way? It's See our this own here? fuel, actually. Yeah. This is our own fuel, yes. Right. Nice and dry. Nice and dry, yes. Absolutely. Yes. And have you, got, have, you got any, have you got a farm here, by the way? We have, yes. My yeah. son has a farm here, yes. yes. Yeah. So you've got some forestry on your land, have you? We have you? forestry on our land, yes. And we great. have our own timber, which would be great. Right. Uh, that is very economical now. I'd only burn a few little blocks in the night time. You see that little basket there now? If that's I had a, a full of that, I wouldn't even have an empty in the morning. This one here? Yes. That's enough for you here, yeah? Yes. Wow. It's very economical now. Right. I removed from the equation. In nearby Temple Derry, a local community has undertaken a massive project. They formed their own energy company and raised capital to develop Ireland's first community-owned wind farm. The wider community of North Tipperary are very active in paving the way for this type of advancement. In nearby Upper Church, I'm meeting Paul Kenny of the Tipperary Energy Agency. Paul's team have been very active in advising and helping the communities in North Tipperary. So that's a, a two turbine, 4.6 megawatt wind farm. It's totally locally owned by 30 individuals um, who came together back in 2001 and said, we'd like to build a wind farm. We'd like to build some, some wind turbines um, and we'd like to, to generate renewable energy from their own free energy supply because it's a, an upland area. And they, they really went around the whole community and canvassed to see who wanted to invest in, in wind energy in, in their own community. And 30 people decided they wanted to be involved. Is this the first community-owned wind farm in Ireland? Yeah, the first operational community wind farm in Ireland. Right. So we're very proud of it. Yeah. The economics of projects like this makes total sense. This project cost 6.2 million euro and will return 1.2 million euro per year so it will be repaid in full in six years. The return is then profit for the community that have invested, and the benefits are huge. For rural communities to become energy self-sustaining is certainly the way forward for Ireland. But to do this, each community needs champions and a committed team who will drive these projects forward. On Arran, it's a cooperative, in Drumban and Upper Church, it was the local energy team. The idea of community energy is beginning to catch on. Recently, 51 local newspapers around Ireland have initiated the nationwide Get Involved competition. Their aim is to encourage communities to get together and set up sustainable energy co-ops in each and every Irish town. For more information, contact SEAI and your local newspaper. I believe we're on the cusp of a massive change. I believe there's going to be a groundswell movement in every small little community across Europe. In Ireland, it's slow, but it's coming, where people will be saying, we want local energy. We want not to be using fossil fuel. We need to be able to reduce our energy demand. And I think that movement is just about to start.